everybody. My name is Kirsten Winkler. This is EduQuest and together we are on the search for better education. Today's guest on the show is Kevin Chen, co-founder of language learning website italki.com. Kevin, it's a great pleasure to have you here today. No, the pleasure is all mine. Um, as this is your first interview on EduQuest, could you please tell my viewers a little bit about yourself, your personal story, and of course uh, the relation to iTalkI and what led you to the idea of creating iTalkI? Sure, sure. Um, my name is Kevin Chen, and I'm a co-founder of iTalkI.com. Um, I guess uh, I, the idea for iTalkI came out of uh, my own personal experience of learning Chinese again as an, as an adult. Um, my first job uh, after I graduated from school uh, was back was actually in finance. Uh, when I left my job in finance, uh, I decided that actually I wanted to try something more entrepreneurial, mm -hmm. and I came to China. And um, as an adult in China, trying to learn Chinese again, um, you know, it was it was a very interesting experience. Um, you know, I remember when I was in school, I was learning Chinese, and it, you know, it, I'd have classes that would, you know, that, that were okay, but you know, it, I, at the end of two years, I wasn't able, really able to communicate. And mm -hmm. when I was immersed in China, it really focused my mind on, you know, what I really needed to learn. And, um, and at the same time, I was looking at ideas for, uh, you know, an internet startup. And I thought, well, if I could marry the concepts of, um, you know. The, of Web 2.0, as well as uh, you know, social language learning. I mm -hmm. thought it could really be something very explosive. So, um, so yeah. I mean, I talk. I came out of really that that experience of learning Chinese in China, and that you know that that sense of immersion, and that sense of you know what is immersion if it's not just being able to communicate with other people, and and that fact that the internet could actually solve that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And um, yeah. so today, I talk. I basically consists of two main parts, um, the iTalkI community and then we have um, for some time now the iTalkI marketplace and mm -hmm. I want to dedicate uh, some part of this interview to the marketplace idea because I think uh, this is a very innovative part of iTalkI today but let's first talk a little bit more about the beginning. So as far as I know it, iTalkI is one of the first language learning communities of the uh, Web 2.0 um, social media era. And um, you mentioned it a little bit already, but um, could you tell us again how did it all start? So what was the original concept um, you as co-founder had back then in December 2006? Right. So. Um so yeah, when I was studying Chinese, um, you know, part of my uh, one of my friends here was actually um, was a Chinese person who was actually learning English, and um, one of the I think the great things about studying abroad is that you do have that opportunity to communicate and to actually do you know what we call language exchanges, mm -hmm. which is uh, trading time, you know, learning one language. I was learning Chinese, and he was also learning English. He was working at a company called uh, Talk to Talk, which is a Shanghai-based company that is teaching English to the Chinese, mm -hmm. and. Um, yeah, in, in terms of you know how we got our start, um, we were actually in the offices of Talk to Talk at the time, and um, part of the idea was they were trying to connect people speaking Chinese and speaking English together. And I guess the concept that we were, I was thinking of was why does it have to just only be Chinese and why does it have to be only English? Why couldn't we just open it up for everyone? Um, I mean, I think one of the earliest language exchange sites that came out was uh, was MyLanguageExchange.com, and that was very early on. I think maybe it was in the late 1990s, mm -hmm. um, and that was very simple. It was almost like a bulletin board of just you know people posting up that they were looking for pen pals or they were looking for um, you know someone right. just to practice yeah. with mm -hmm. and I think that you could just see the evolution of the market for that um, it was you know you could have full social profiles you could have people really build a social graph around this and um, and of course the, uh, the I think the big change that happened was you know voice over IP technologies became you know widespread um, you know how many people are using Skype now or MSN it's Yahoo amazing, yeah. um, many of these programs yeah, you know, I mean, you know, when your parents are using these things to keep in touch with you, I think that that's that shows you just how far you know that the market has changed, and, and the fact that you could communicate agree, internationally yeah. for zero 
really just, you know, I, I think was astounding. And, um, and for me, I think that was, that was the sort of the moment where I was thinking that, geez, you know, my Chinese has improved so much being in China, you know, just having the ability to, you know, be immersed, to actually mm -hmm. talk with people on the street or, you know what I mean, your classmates or, your, you know, or your friends or, you know, just people everywhere you are. And, and, and the Internet could, you know, could do that. It could kill this sort of distance problem, right? Um, you, know, you know, if I was back in the States when I learned Chinese the first time around, you know, it wasn't so easy necessarily to find, you know, native Chinese speakers. But, um, but, you know, but with the Internet, I mean, good God, when we launched in December of 2006, um, you know, the site was very unbalanced. It was mm -hmm. almost all Chinese uh, people on there. And everyone who got on, you know, as a Westerner, if you, especially if you were learning Chinese, you had, you had as many it language partners and authority, tutors, yeah. as, mm -hmm. as much help as... Yeah, and it was just, um, you know, it was, I guess that was the inspiring thing, that the community would just come out there and just, you know, they were just ready to help you, and they were just interested yeah. in meeting you, they were just interested in getting that sort of contact, they just wanted to talk, mm -hmm. and um, and I guess that's kind of where we started off at December 2006, we put it out there, and it was very simple, it was just create a profile for yourself, tell us what language you were interested in learning, um, you know, what you spoke, and then just connecting up and making friends that way, and mm -hmm. you know, and since then it's, it's evolved. Um, in 2007, we um, mid 2007, we made it formally. We made it Atakai independent, and then um, and then we really started trying to build out this community type of features. Mm -hmm. So um, you know, did you always have to be online to actually to write to someone? No, maybe you wanted to post a question to the community, you know. And I guess that's when we started put, started putting on features like answers, and we started trying to say, well, you know, maybe you have a group, or maybe you just wanted to discuss something. It didn't necessarily have to be a question with a time frame. Mm -hmm. um, you know, for example, what if you had handouts? You know, I always think about, you know, all those meticulous handouts that I would write out with, you know, all these grammar rules. And wouldn't it be great if I could just, you know, share that? You know, I mean, the same way you might share a study guide or you might mm -hmm. share, you know, just, yeah. just things that you, you thought were helpful. So, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, I thought yeah. I really started off on a sort of community basis mm -hmm. of just, you know, could you help each other? And that's and very that's, interesting um, because yeah. it leads to my next question. And when I compare iTalkI to um, other language learning communities, um, it still seems to have a very uh, basic offer. So, for example, you're not offering uh, flashcard learning courses or a virtual classroom. But uh, is this part of your approach to make the whole iTalkI experience as seamless as possible, meaning um, only to offer tools that the majority of users anywhere in the world um, have access to? Right. I think, um, yeah, we, you know, we are, our goal is definitely to try and make it as broad as possible. Mm. And, you know, we would love to have flashcards and we would love to have more and more features. Um, I mean, those things I think are all fantastic. And I think every, um, you know, all the other language learning networks as well as just language learning websites in general, I think that, you know, everyone's focused on a different piece. And, and you know, I think that that's what's so great for students these days that you can draw from yeah. so many different sites and so many different areas. Um, I think from our perspective, one thing that we wanted to try and do was keep ourselves neutral. Um, mm -hmm. We didn't want to necessarily, um, partly because we don't necessarily have that in-house technical expertise. Um, you know, we couldn't necessarily, uh, you know, for example, if we were to write a very specific application about learning Chinese characters, I mean, it would not necessarily apply to other languages. Um, and I guess partly what we were hoping to do is create more of a platform sort of view that, you know, maybe one day we will be able to support applications from other people. You know, we don't have to necessarily create everything ourselves. I mean, you know, yeah. ideally, you know, even in the way that Facebook creates that sort of yeah. platform for other applications to live on Facebook. Um, so, yeah, you know, I think in that respect, we were trying to imagine that most of our features would not be proprietary. It wouldn't necessarily be something like I talk eyes flashcards and we're going to charge you for looking mm -hmm. at them. You know, I mean, our, our view is much more if we could create some sort of, you know, some sort of a community generated platform and keep it open for everybody to to use and to, and to take from. I mean, because, you know, obviously we didn't write it ourselves. So, you know, I mean, it, it's not I don't think it's so right for us to, to charge for it. Um, mm -hmm. I, I guess in that respect, you know, it, I don't want to move too quickly into the marketplace, but that's I think that our business model isn't driven by, um, by that sort of access. Okay, so, so but you know, that's very interesting to, the extent that we, to, to hear. Hmm? Okay. To so the extent that we can, yeah. we want to keep it open. And, um, you know, like for example, our, um, like what we often write for things like our answers section, our group section, as mm -hmm. well as, you know, the knowledge sections, and then resources sections, um, we try to keep on a creative commons basis mm -hmm. where it's not, yeah. you know, you should not be uploading copyrighted material. It should be something that should be shareable, and it should be something that everyone should be able to access without, you know, without having to have right, you know, specific right. rights. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, so we covered uh, the years 2006, 2007 now, and um, 
then in 2008, let's say a lot of uh, high-profile experts, advisors joined the iTalk IT. And uh, I'd be interested how this come um, about. So did uh, you approach them or were they attracted by your fast-growing community? I think it's a combination of both. We were we were lucky to have actually um, a very good uh, uh, board director actually join our company, uh, William Balbean, who is a venture mm -hmm. capitalist at SoftBank, and um, and he was um, he was very instrumental, I guess, in, in trying to help us, uh, you know, kind of move to the next level of being a small internet startup. Mm -hmm. I mean, we are based in Shanghai, China. Um, you know, we are a Hong Kong registered company, but our operations are here, and um, and we are we are a young team. Uh, you know, to be honest, we're not. Uh, you know, we don't have 10 years of experience in Silicon Valley. So, um, you know, in that respect, it's good and it's bad. You know, I guess part of it is, is that we don't know what we can't do. You know, um, we have a lot of energy and there's a lot of optimism over here. Um, but at the same time, it's kind of like, you know, you, you need, um, you know, more experienced people. You know, you need the perspectives of more experienced people to help you navigate and to help you avoid some of the uh, mistakes that maybe some other, you know, Internet companies might not, you know, might make. So, um, so yeah, we were lucky. William's been able to uh, make a lot of introductions for us. And we've been mm -hmm. we've been very blessed actually uh, to meet many of these advisors and to, to to draw from their experiences. So you know whether they were building B two B platforms or whether it was for marketing or uh, you know for someone who actually has a, you know more views on consumer internet. And I think one of the things that I've been really impressed with um, in terms of the you know in terms of the internet community is just how willing people are to to share you know their experiences and things that work for them as well as things that you know that you know that they think you know you should probably avoid. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. yeah. But but it is. Uh, it offers so ma much, um, yeah, opportunities also to to learn, to get information, uh, and people. Yes, people are generally good, and I think want to share. And uh, yeah, definitely. So yeah. then, about uh, ten months later, I talk. I launched the marketplace in March two thousand nine. I think, and first step was that members were uh, then able to offer their teaching on a paid basis, so not only free language exchange. And uh, iTalkI is also the only platform which makes a difference between tutors and professional teachers. Why? Right. Um, right. We tried to, um, I, you know, just to uh, to kind of give a framework for it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, the, the many people who were interested in language exchange, I mean, many people were not interested in changing their time. You know, if you were very busy, you know, you might say, like, well, look, I, I'm willing to pay. You know, is there a way I can transact? And I think that that's what we were trying to address that need. I mean, it was something that we wanted to do from the very beginning, but we just were building up the expertise to do so because handling international payments as well as, mm -hmm. um, you know, if, you, if your partner happens to be in China, they won't necessarily be able to accept PayPal or, you know, if you want to pay with a credit card, it's not necessarily so easy for someone on the receiving it to actually handle that. And of course, you always have the problem of, you know, is this a bad student or is this a teacher, you know, was a lesson good? So, you know, there's an element of trying to, uh, you know, to protect both sides from fraud as well as, um, you know, making sure that payment transaction can be made. So, absolutely, so that's what we were trying to do with the first step in the marketplace for connecting independent teachers with, with students. Um, why we decided to break up professional teachers and tutors, um, I mean, this is something that I think is, for, for our perspective, we was, is more a self-identified um, mm -hmm. basis. Because um, you know it's very hard for us to to verify you know on a global basis you know, people from many different backgrounds. I mean we unfortunately don't have necessarily that ability yet. Um, but you know the, the 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 distinction we wanted to draw was that it's not just one market. Um, I think there's a sense there's a fear that most people are driven entirely by pricing and that you know it's a race to the bottom and that wow you know you have a teacher from the Philippines who's willing to teach English for three dollars and that does not mean that we'll all be working at a three dollar wage. And and I think that. Um, I, I think that, you know, maybe that's where it's starting off right now, but I think that over time you will see that people have different, you know, different requirements or people have different um, demands mm -hmm. and that, you know, some people are very price sensitive, whereas other people may be more interested in a person's qualifications. And so, for example, a language tutor we just classify as anyone, you know, I mean, everyone basically who is not a professional teacher can be yeah. classified as a language tutor. Mm -hmm. and whereas a professional teacher, we we are, are two requirements were, were either that you have a degree in, mm -hmm. you know, education or the other one being that you have experience as a professional yeah. teacher. Mm -hmm. And I think that the distinction for us was important because we found that many people would get on 
with the teacher and, and simply ask, well, is there any structure to this lesson, you know, or, you know, I mean, if you have a very specific question, you know, that, you know, could this person be able to answer it? And, you know, I think that many people who grew up with a native, you know, with a language are very good for conversational practice, but may not be able to explain to you, you know, they won't, they won't necessarily have the linguistics or the, you know, the language background to actually explain a grammar point. Mm -hmm. And then I think most importantly is to give that structure that it's not just, well, I'm paying for just someone's time. I'm not just paying for two hours of time or, you know, or eight hours of time. What I'm really paying for is actually, uh, you know, a course, right? I mean, I think that right now tutoring is kind of has a sense of just, you know, well, I'm just getting some extra help. Mm -hmm. But, you know, there is the question of, you know, whether we say five years from now, is actually teaching going to look more like this? You know, are you going to say that there's really not that much of a difference between an offline class and an online class? You know, that after six months in this online class, whether it's taught, you know, uh, you know, in person or whether it's taught actually through Skype or through another virtual classroom that actually I should move from a beginner level to an intermediate level. And another six months after that or another year after that, I should be moving from an intermediate level to an advanced mm -hmm. level. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that a person who is not professional doesn't necessarily have that structure or that sense of what are the things that you need to learn step yeah. by step by step. I see. Mm -hmm. So... Um, so okay. I, I think that, you know, I mean, you, you know, Chris, Kirsten, I mean, you, you know, you're a teacher. So, you know, I mean, I, I wouldn't claim to be a, you know, a, a, a professional teacher of English, you know, um, but, uh, you know, I think that that's what um, someone on a, a student from my talk I would expect, you know, that I would be able, you know, that whoever is a professional teacher would be able to bring them up that level. Okay. I think that was very um, interesting <sighs> and important to explain to, to my viewers as I think amongst them are many professional teachers, but of course also people generally interested in uh, language tuition. Okay. Along with the marketplace came the iTalk iCredit system and all services and products on the iTalk i marketplace are paid with these iTalk iCredits. So could you explain the idea behind it? Um, I think I talk I credit uh, virtual currencies in China are actually very prevalent. Um, you know, many social networks use them as well as many gaming networks. Um, I think I talk I credits for us was just a way of making the transactions simpler. Um, you know, rather than um, you know, since our, our user base is actually very uh, very flat, it's very well distributed all over the world, and um, we could have. We decided to keep the, um, the iTalk I credit pegged to the dollar for now, um, and you know, just to make it simpler, I guess, as a medium mm -hmm. of exchange, you know, rather than always being worried about fluctuating prices or you know how it might look in a in a different currency. So I think it was largely for um, for you know for simplicity's sake, you know, the fact that you could just display a price. Um, but in terms of how it transacts, yeah, um, students would purchase iTalk I credits ahead of time, and that and then when they try to book time with a teacher, they try to purchase a, a good, they use those credits um, and they effectively move um, into escrow. So, you know, as a teacher, you don't have to be worried that a, te mm. that a student won't show up because this money is, is there, it's been earmarked. And then, you know, likewise, as a teacher, um, you know, you get iTalk I credits, mm -hmm. um, you know, depending on where you are, you can transfer those credits into, you know, into your currency using whatever uh, payment mm -hmm. methods that we've been able to set up. So, you know, initially we have PayPal, we have Alipay, and we've also started doing bank transfers. And we continue to add on more payment systems over time. So, you know, hopefully, ideally over time that, you know, every part of the globe will be able to be covered by at least one of our payment systems and that you can transact one way or the other using using these credits. But when so. I when I when I see um, all the different methods your payment methods you're offering now already uh, I talk I is like ahead of many of the uh, other competitors on the market. Okay. Um, I talk I's CEO Yong Yue Jiang said in a press release in March this year that uh, I talk I aim to create 10,000 new full and part-time uh, <laughs> language teachers jobs by the end of 2009. So how many have you been able to create up to today? Oh, it's a tough question. Um, we have, I think it's interesting, um, you know, you have a, a whole distribution of teachers, you know, many, some teachers get on the site and are able to teach many, many lessons, um, and mm -hmm. you have some teachers who teach just a few, and a, and some who teach, you know, a, a moderate amount. Um, I would like to say that, you know, it's still early days for the system, so, yeah, I think that 10,000 might have been a little bit ambitious, but um, I do think that, ambitious you know, this is, is something good. that, uh, not just, <laughs> yeah. not just us, but I think that many people are kind of seeing the, you know, they're kind of 
seeing that my language teaching might move in this direction. I, I don't necessarily think that all, uh, you know, all, all uh, classes will necessarily move in this direction, but I think that mm -hmm. language teaching in particular, I think, is, is relatively special because of the, uh, you know, the, the international foreign language teaching, the international component of this. You know, mm -hmm. where is the largest pool of Chinese teachers? Um, you know, they're, they're not they're not in the U.S. or they're not in Europe, right? I mean, they're in China, right. and many mm. people are very happy to to make that transaction. And I think that if you were, if especially if we we're able to add on things like, say, group classes, um, you know, some things that change the economics that you know that shifted more in people's favor. I think that this trade could become very, you know, very important. That over time, you know, we might actually, you know, this might become the dominant form of language teaching in, in the future. So, um, you know, unfortunately, maybe not 10,000 you know, jobs by 2009, but certainly if I were to say you know, I'd say five or ten years from now, you know, and, you know, we hope it's us, but, you know, maybe it's not. I mean, but, you know, someone will have solved this problem. And I think that, you know, the, uh, getting a language instruction will, will, will no longer be tied to where you live. Mm -hmm. It'll no longer be, you know, it'll no longer be a function of what your local supply yeah. happens to be, if there happens to be a Berlitz Institute or what have you. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, and actually, I think another uh, another important factor um, is that we've also started adding on. We mentioned the marketplace, um, other goods and services, and so we do have a new partner called Illusion Technologies, and they are um, they are a school, actually, an online school. So it's um, it's not just you know I taught our teachers up until uh, that point were actually independent, you know, just individuals who were teaching mm -hmm. um, students. But now I think we're trying to make the marketplace flexible enough to handle institutions. Um, you know, not necessarily, we don't, you know, I think you could argue that, you know, some schools might be a little bit wasteful in terms of, you know, not wasteful, but, you know, this that they have to pay for rent or they have to pay for management and mm -hmm. things like that. But on the other hand, I mean, there is a lot of benefits for schooling as well. You know, you can you can guarantee a level of service and quality. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you can guarantee that they have this background or, you know, or what, you know, and that's, and that's, that may be helpful for some people um, who maybe are interested in that type of solution. That's so. very interesting that you mentioned Illusion um, already because um, that was exactly my next question. Yeah. So with them, we can say that the first company entered the iTalk i marketplace, and I think that was uh, in July this year, offering um, Pearson content-based, uh, their Speak Inc. course, and then one-on-one -on -one teaching on, to the iTalk i members. And what is interesting to me is um, how was the reaction of your community? And um, then are there other partnerships planned for other languages? And also, how do you think this will affect um, the independent teachers and tutors on the iTalkI marketplace? Um. So many questions there. Yeah, many, um, I, I think know. the reception has been the reception. I think has actually been pretty interesting. Um, we've been so far doing most of our marketing in Asia for uh, speaking um, and mm -hmm. for for illusion, and I think that many people find it to be very interesting. Especially the online course, I think, mm -hmm. is one that we've priced at a very low level, um, and I think it's at a level that you, if you compare, especially with local alternatives, especially in you know, China, um, it's it's actually very reasonable. Um, again, you know, I think uh, if you look at you know, people are always comparing online uh, websites against other online websites, and it's, uh, you know, I mean, we're, of course, we're very, you know, everyone's very competitive in this space, but I think that, you know, what some people are missing is that the comparison basis, you know, is sometimes against offline, you know, institutions, which sometimes don't have, let's say, native speakers of this language, which sometimes are exceptionally uh, expensive, and I can speak of some institutions in China, um, you know, it's costing, you know, literally $4,000, $3,000, you know, yeah. a year, uh, you and know, and think, it's I mean, and this is for about, we can talk about the price. Yeah. I think you offer that for six dollars or six uh, I talk I credits a year. This. It's it's this price is actually right now it's promotional so we're actually yeah. very quickly going to be raising this but um but right now yeah absolutely right now it's being offered for sixteen U S dollars for a year uh, for a year subscription it really is a knockdown price uh, and it's you know it, it really is uh, amazing content really quite impressive uh, you know having actually looked at it myself and gone through a couple lessons I've just been you know I mean I you know I've just impressed mm -hmm. um, so in the long I mean absolutely a lot of people can actually get access to this and I think that you know the cost for delivering this this specific aspect of the service is actually quite you know I mean it's just the cost of bandwidth mm -hmm. um, you know and people I think you know our hope is that we can reach a lot of people this way you know partly to introduce them to I talk I partly to introduce them to the idea that they can actually even learn online mm -hmm. that they don't have to spend I mean you know three thousand dollars you know in a country where you know the uh, the average you know per capita income is, is you know is 
not much more than that, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's it's people are investing in their education, but they don't think they necessarily realize, you know, what what great alternatives there are outside of that. Um, in terms of the one-on-one -on -one teaching, um, Illusion has teachers in the U.S. that it manages. Um, they're professional teachers, mm -hmm. very professional. They've been trained for online teaching as well. And um, and I think that it's a little bit of a longer-going, a longer-term plan for them because I think again, right now, many people are looking at the price comparison. Mm -hmm. I don't think that um, I don't think it's necessarily negative again for independent teachers because again, I feel like there's a whole range. I mean, some people actually prefer independent teachers. Um, some people prefer actually having a school that gives them that sort of sense of certification that. You know, for example, maybe you're a company and you, you know, it's not okay for you to expense, you know, that your English training came from some independent person. Maybe you need to have a, a company backing it. I mean, there are different needs. I think that can be satisfied if you're a corporation and maybe you wish to, you know, you wish to book many teachers. Maybe there's a standard or a consistent level of quality that you want to also, you know, to have. So I, I hope it's not negative. I don't think the response has been negative so far. I mean, mostly I think it's just been a question of, you know, finding their place in the market. Um, and again, right now. I think the focus is still on students and finding more students to come into the system, and I think that that is sort of the uh, the great benefit, you know, of trying to popularize the system. Just simply the idea that you could be learning online, I think, is is the idea that I think is a big sort of step in the market. Mm -hmm. And I guess the the final. Uh, the final point, uh, just in terms of other languages, absolutely. Um, we are in talks. We are, are working in terms of integration for other languages um, to bring on more partners. I mean, it's, it's our hope that we can, you know, that I mean, it's not just an English product. The marketplace can actually support many different types of products, many types of online teaching. Um, you know, I mean, our, our hope, you know, is that one day in the future, you know, a student will get onto iTalkI or, you know, and be able to say, well, you know, I can find almost everything I need here, you know, or at least a significant portion of my learning needs can come from, from this place. You know, whether that's not necessarily an iTalkI service, it's not necessarily something that we are providing, but it's something that one of our partners can provide. And it's that, you know, and that as a student, you can actually get ratings, you can actually see what's actually been helpful or, you know, what other people have discussed in the community. You can find everything from free resources to, you know, in a supportive community, to things that are, you know, more professionally done. So. Yeah, and that, um, oh, that is um, a good uh, start for my um, last, also big question. So um, while, uh, while other competitors seem to concentrate on constantly growing their offer of language courses. I talk I seems to focus on the platform itself. For example, uh, let's take um, or you dedicate a lot of time and uh, effort on implementing new payment methods, enabling students from the Middle East and from China to buy the different products on the iTalkI marketplace. And if I have a look at the bios of iTalkI's advisors and directors, I can see a strong trend towards e-commerce and also customer internet companies. So is iTalkI on the way to become the next or the Amazon of language learning? I mean, a one-stop shop with the iTalkI community as client base? I think that's a, it's a, it's a one way to categorize it, absolutely. Um, I think that, you know, we, like, like I mentioned before, um, you know, it's Partly, we aren't uh, we aren't trying to to create these services on a proprietary basis, and to the extent that absolutely that we can support partnerships, that we can support other companies that are more specialized, that you know are you know that are staffed by teachers or staffed by you know specialists in a language or specialists in teaching something. I think that those are the people that we would like to bring into our ecosystem, and I think that exactly you know if you are a, you know you know you are a podcast company or you are a language teaching company for one of these things, you know, you're looking for those students, you're looking for that market and I hope that what we can do is we can, because of the fact that we're very broad and we're neutral, that we can draw them in and that, you know, we're not trying to compete with them. You know, we're trying to let, you know, we're trying to expose our community to them. And I, and I think that that's what our community wants as well. I mean, they're there to learn, they're there to meet people, they're there mm -hmm. to, you know, to, to get in touch with this. So, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a good match. I think, you know, it's not, you know, as I mentioned before, it's not Facebook, right? Um, you know, it's not something that it's, you know, that we're trying to put on all of your friends and we're not trying to replicate, you know, the relationships that you have in the real world. This is something that you have a goal for. You know, you're here to learn and you're here to reach out to people who you normally don't have the, you know, the ability 
ability to actually have a normal contact with. And I think that, you know, in the same way, you know, you know, language schools and language services that you wouldn't normally be able to find near you or you wouldn't know where to find at all, you know, those things can be seamlessly integrated for you. And that Definitely. you can, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. you can bring it together. Yeah. Well, that's, that's okay. our hope. <laughs> yeah, you bring it, yeah, you bring it together. So, Kevin, thank you very much for this interview. I really think you have a very unique and sustainable model with the iTalkI community and the marketplace. And I'm looking forward to see it grow and wish you all the best for the future of iTalkI and, of course, for you personally as well. Thanks so much, Kirsten. It's been wonderful. Mm -hmm.